purposeful scars. On the second day of our cruise, I asked Jess what her tattoos meant. It means the most obvious, she said, eyes fluttering down to her shin where a compass curled its way up her ankle. I love travelling and Australia really unlocked that for me. I thought back to when I first met Jess. While it was true that some parts of us are unchanging, we are fluid entities and both of us had altered since our first introduction. Since then I have pierced my ears again and she's got two tattoos. I thought about the way we scar ourselves on purpose, stabbing metal through our flesh and needling ink through our translucent layers of skin. But another fear of mine has always been getting lost, she admitted, and a shadow passed over her face. And I don't know, Australia really helped me with that, because sometimes we would get lost. Sometimes we would get lost. What a beautiful thing to aspire to. I didn't interrupt her, not then, but I hoped I got lost and found many more times during my Euro trip. And it came to be this natural thing, she continued, while she played with the ink on her skin, always being able to find my way back, that's important. Not all who wander are lost, I echoed, and she grinned. She knows me, she loves me. I know her, I love her. We understood it in that moment and laughed at each other as I asked her about her second tattoo. My second one? Jess laughed, her distinctly American laugh. Show me. She turned around until I saw the beginnings of ink, barely visible through the clothes she wore. She explained the geometric pattern and her love of wolves. There are lone wolves, she explained, but they can also be pack animals. She explained that family and friends meant a lot to her and that besides the fact that it just looked cool, it was unfinished, imperfect. Just like me. Just like me, there were layers of complexity and simplicity and duplicity tethered to those words. I contemplated them as she pulled her shirt back up and I thought about how beautiful it is to know someone's layers. Jess reminds me of aspects of myself, although we are so different. She's tough and wears her scars proudly. I think sometimes we scar ourselves on purpose. I know my seconds or my second ear piercings were in response to my first real heartbreak. There was something cathartic about the metal piercing the flesh, for beauty, yes, but also as a reminder of pain the way the internal pain could be exchanged for an external sort. I examined Jess's tattoos and realised she'd done the same. There is beauty in the absence of things. Most cultures have plotted constellations by the stars themselves, the great balls of gas and light that they are, but the Aboriginal culture? For them, they make shapes in the heavens, not from the stars, but from the darkness, from what lives in the shadows in the absence of light. I have always been a Shakespeare buff. I find such hope and meaning in the eloquence of his words. I find myself mumbling a line of iamic pentameter to myself in any given circumstance, as there always seems to be one or more of his plays that applies directly into life, and isn't that why the bard has lived on well past his death? The fault is not in our stars, but in ourselves that we are underlings. This line has recently been made famous in pop cult by the novel turned film by John Green, The Fault in Our Stars, but I think few people really know what this means. Is the fault in our stars? Does fate dictate the course of our lives? Are our choices predetermined, written poetically in the heavens above? John Green certainly thinks that shit just happens and I would have to agree with him to some extent, although I definitely don't like the idea that fate will overcome free will. Or is it as Cassius told Brutus, the fault is not in our stars but in ourselves. Let us take responsibility for the consequences of our actions. Cassius may have been trying to convince Brutus to kill Caesar by presenting an argument that free will dictates our decisions, not some predated course in the stars. Caesar is a powerful man, to be sure, but still a man. Therefore, whether or not he lives is not necessarily up to a god, but to us, the mortal men who are free to kill as we choose. I thought about this as we headed out to sea. The horizon on our peripheral and the stars' brilliant array of fireflies catapulted across a milky dark canvas. I glanced sideways at Jess, who had a small smile playing on her lips, her dark eyes and lashes reflecting the light that danced off the water. She was here and so was I. Money didn't matter, not really. I wished I could show the world that money is illusory. The only power it holds is what we give it. For me, money is representative of the travel I can take, the adventures I could have. And because we were here, the compass on Jess's leg pointed up towards the sky and the wolf on her back peeking out behind a halter neck tank top, I couldn't help but think that I was the master of my fate and the captain of my soul. Whether or not we choose to travel or work, wrinkle ourselves with pictures or pierce our skin with silver, they were our decisions to make. If the fault is in ourselves, therein too lies our strengths.